Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, from verses 35 up till verse 59. Especially from verse 35 till 43, we see that the Lord Jesus is um, giving many reasons for uh, the servants to be alert. And uh, um, in verse 35 onwards, he says, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. And uh, uh, he, he gives many reasons. He says, uh, because you do not know the time your master is going to come. Your master has gone for a wedding banquet and uh, he will return. So when he returns, there cannot be a delay in opening the door. He wants us to be awake. He wants us to be alert. He wants us to be dressed. He wants us to have the lights and all the settings in a way that the master appreciates now, this is very crucial in the life of a believer to prepare for the Lord's coming. In verse uh, 35, he says, uh, be dressed for service and uh, keep your lamps burning. In other words, he's telling that uh, you cannot take a cavalier attitude. You cannot go to sleep or you just can't go off duty. Uh, in the beautiful song, Onward Christian Soldiers, the last line reads this, when duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. That means you should always be present where you are required, whether it is for danger or for duty. And so this is a duty that the Lord has given us to be alert for the Lord's coming. And how to be alert for the Lord's coming? There are two things he specially mentions. The first thing is uh, their dress, that is, that, that shows their preparedness as servants. It doesn't take off their servant attitude, but it uh, puts them in that servant attire. And not only that, it also talks about your lamps burning. That is, uh, you, you are expending all the oil you have because you just don't want the house to be dark when the master comes and uh, when the master returns uh, so that as soon as he knocks, Quickly, as soon as he knocks, you will immediately open the door for him. What a beautiful preparation. The Lord is teaching his people around him that you ought to be very quick to respond. This is not only for the final coming of the Lord, but it is also for every day's response to the Lord. Immediate obedience, implicit obedience and complete obedience. This is what the Lord really wants from us. So uh, many a times uh, uh, we, we fail in these three things. One thing is uh, in, in our servant attitude. And the second thing is in our, our lights shining or giving, giving off, uh, uh, burning away uh, in order to uh, shine forth for the glory of the Father and immediate obedience. And then uh, he goes on to say, when the master comes and he finds uh, that these servants are ready, then it says, verse 37, it'll be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. And he, he gives us something that really doesn't happen in a normal uh, lifestyle or in a normal home, but that happens in a uh, spiritual home with, with God. He says, I tell you the truth, the master will come and he will wait and he will make them recline at the table and will wait on them. This is what the Lord Jesus does for us. He prepares a table for us. The Holy Spirit God ministers to us. The Father in his mercy, he prepares a table for us. So we, we recognize that the Father is preparing a table. The Son is serving us. The Son is serving uh, like how he washed uh, the feet of the disciple. He is interceding for us. He is advocating for us. He is serving us. And the Blessed Holy Spirit from inside he is equipping us. So we see that this great honor, even as the Old Testament says in 1 Samuel 2.30, them that honor me, I will honor. In the same way, we, we see that uh, the Lord uh, really honors uh, his faithful servants. 
Then in verse 38, he goes on to say, when he comes, even if it is the second and the third watch of the night, that means it is very late, but these people don't give reasons. They don't give reasons that it is too late, that they're tired, and that uh, uh, it was a master's mistake. None of these reasons, they just are totally bound, not only by duty, but also by love to uh, for the coming of uh, the master. And then uh, in verse 40, he says, you must also be ready because uh, the son of man comes at the hour when you least expect him. The reason he comes at that hour is because human calculations fail. Because even when Jesus was on this earth, he said, even the son does not know the time. So uh, it's a mystery. Nobody can precisely calculate the exact time of Jesus' arrival because uh, that, that precise anonymity has been put by God so that we are always ready. And then verse 41, um, Peter asked, Lord, should we, uh, are, you, are you talking this to, are you speaking all these things to only to us or to people around? And Jesus continues to answer in verse 42, he says, who then is the faithful and wise master? And from here onwards, we especially see um, that he is uh, talking about what is the price that these people need to pay for the coming of the Lord. He says, um, when the father puts them uh, or when the master puts them in charge to give uh, the food uh, at their appropriate time. Now, this can mean so many things, uh, but just staying there. In verse 43, he says, it will be good when the, when the master comes and he finds the servant doing this he will put him in charge of all his possessions. So we see that God gives us little duties or little responsibilities, tests our faithfulness, and always faithfulness is rewarded by extra work, extra responsibilities, and extra ministry. Faithfulness is rewarded by giving more to us. And then uh, he goes on to say, um, but but if suppose uh, there is a servant who says, uh, you know, my master is long in coming, he, he will delay. And uh, this man starts to beat up the men servant uh, and the maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. Uh, then the master of that day will come on a day when he least expects him. And that day he will be he will cut into cut him into pieces and assign him to the unbelievers. So uh, we see two things. One. When you are faithful, he is, as, he is increasing your ministry, increasing your responsibility and giving you charge over all his possessions. It's a very huge word, all his possessions. Whereas for unfaithful one, you know, what he says is he will be cut into pieces. He will be thrown out to the place of unbelievers. That is the, the greatest loss this man is going to face is a fellowship with his master. He's going to lose such a beautiful master and he's going to be alienated from him. And verse 47 onwards, he says, there is a one who, who, who knows the master's will, but who does not do it, then he'll be beaten with many beatings. That means uh, people who know, who have greater revelation, who have greater knowledge, greater understanding uh, about the word or about uh, uh, the Lord Jesus and yet disobey, they have a greater punishment. So when the New Testament speaks about being teachers, it wants us because they are double, double accountable, not only for what they know, but also for what they tell. So the more revelation and uh, after knowing if you disobey, then you are beaten with greater beatings, the Bible says. But if suppose you do not know and because of ignorance you delay, then uh, the Bible says that uh, you will be beaten with few uh, blows. So um, it doesn't mean that uh, we should have a negative approach towards this and say, okay, so uh, if I don't do, then if I know and don't do, then I'll be beaten more. So better not knowing. No, that's not the way you need to take it. Because previously we saw that God gives us charge over all his possession. Seeing that as an incentive, seeing our fellowship with the master, seeing our fellowship very close to him, that as a reward, we need to get to know more about the Lord Jesus. And uh, from the uh, 49th verse, uh, we get to see that uh, he changes his tone and he talks about his disciples and uh, he gives them 
uh, from 49 to 53, uh, he gives them certain warnings. He says, uh, you know, uh, in verse 49, that uh, I have come to bring a fire on earth. What is this fire? This fire is a fire that, uh, uh, you know, uh, puts your real nature out. You know, fire always brings out the true nature, whether you are worthy or unworthy, is tested by fire throughout scripture. And uh, even John the Baptist tells this, that his winnowing uh, uh, fork is in his hand and he will gather the grain. Uh, and the chaff will be burned away with an unquenchable fire. So he's brought a fire that will expose the thoughts and the motives of man. And uh, he says um, in verse 50, he's talking about uh, the, the sorrow and the pain of the passion on the cross that he has to accomplish. And then in verse 51 onwards to 53, he talks to his disciples and he says, you ought to face uh, problems uh, from your own family members. Your families will be divided, um, you know, three against two, two against three. Uh, sometimes majority will follow the Lord, a minority will be against them. Minority will follow the Lord, a majority will be against them. Blood relatives will go against one another. They will think that killing somebody on the name of religion will be a service to God. Those days will be horrible. He wants his disciples say they will have to face persecution from their own families. And how true it is, how true it is that uh, many committed believers face persecution from their own families. And even the Lord Jesus' own family did not accept him in the beginning. And uh, uh, But yet uh, we need to stand because if you if you want to love the Lord, you, you need to love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, more than everybody else. And then talking to the others in the crowd, he uh, from verse 54 onwards till 59, he says, uh, you know, you are interpreting the geographic conditions around you. You see the cloud, you say it's going to rain and you see the wind and it say, you say it's hot. You're able to see the weather, uh, you're able to forecast the weather rightly, very accurately. But the problem is you're not able to understand the spiritual times. You're not able to see spiritual timings, the working of the Lord. This was their great uh, problem and uh, he, he calls them in verse 56 he says hypocrites you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky and all of these things but you are uh, so ignorant um, in other words he's calling them hypocrites because uh, they want to interpret uh, weather rightly because uh, uh, they they really want to take a re, a response or they want to respond according to the weather. If it's raining, they want to respond a certain way. If it's uh, sunny, they want to respond a certain way. But though knowing the things of the Lord, they don't want to respond. That's why the Lord calls them hypocrites. And then verse 57, he says, um, why don't you uh, judge for yourselves what is right? Um, that uh, if you have something against your adversary, it is drawing you to the magistrate. He says, you know, it is better. It is better to settle things quickly because if not, if not, once things are late, once things are late, then uh, you you will not escape until you pay the last penny. So he says, settle things rightly. This was what he was uh, trying to uh, tell the crowd, you know, like how you are interpreting these times. Read scripture. Take the words that I tell you, interpret them rightly so that you can change quickly because if you delay, then you will have to pay a very huge price. So we see that the unfaithful one pays a price. The one who knows the father's will and yet does not do it pays a very serious price. The one who out of ignorance doesn't do pays a price, but not so great. And the one who doesn't respond uh, rightly to the uh, signs around him, he pays a great price. Finally, to the one who delays in response, he pays a great price. Gracious Heavenly Father, help us to be able to interpret um, your word and know and be prepared, uh, ready for your coming, giving you highest priority with all our diligence and vigilance. We might look forward to meet you, Lord. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen.